Hello, all of my young physicists. Uh, I'm here today at Curie High School, and uh, I've noticed a few things changing, signs on the walls and things on the floor to help keep us safe during this period of time, but it was really important that I came in so that uh, we could look at some of the important equipment that's gonna help you to understand this idea of speed a little bit more deeply. Uh, this activity has, there's kind of a lot to it, besides just measuring the speed, which I'm gonna do with the little track that I've measured behind me here. I want you to also pay attention to the different types of cars and the way in which they move. Uh, I'm going to videotape it so that you'll be able to see the car actually moving. And uh, just think about issues that might affect the quality of the measurement. Uh, think about the way that things that I'm doing and think about the ways that the car moves. If you really believe that that measurement is a good measurement, is it really giving me the average speed of the, of the vehicle? So hopefully you've got your data table open already. And I'm going to give you the names of the vehicles and you want to type those in right away. Uh, I'm not going to go back over them at the end. So one of them is called the battery powered car. That guy looks like this. He has a little switch on the side. You turn it on, and the wheels turn on and drive the guy forward. The battery-powered car, or you can call it the battery car, would also be okay. A uh, second car, which I really enjoy, is called the Tommy car. This guy is a fun one. The mechanism has a spring inside that when you push down on the head, it loads up the spring so that when I release the wheels here on this side, the wheels suddenly take off. His head pops up, and the wheels take off. That's called a Tommy car, T-O-M-Y, Tommy car. Uh, we have a pullback car, pullback car. Uh, this one is a 2014, yep, 2014 uh, Chevy Silverado, complete with working doors. Uh, this one works by pulling backwards on it, and as you pull backwards on the wheel, you'll see that it will wind up, and eventually you'll hear a clicking sound. That clicking means that you've gone as far as you can go, and so now you're going to let the wheels go, and the wheels are going to take off and drive the car forward. That's called the pullback, pullback car. Last one then is, for lack of a better word, uh, I'm gonna call the flywheel car. The flywheel, F-L-Y-W-H-E-E-L. -E -E the flywheel, the way this car works is, you don't pull back on it, there's a small, like actually got kind of a heavy weight inside of it that's circular. And when I drive the wheels forward, it makes that wheel inside turn so that when I let go of it, the wheel will keep spinning and it kind of drives the car forward. Not at super speed, I mean, considering this is a race car, you'll see this is, this is not necessarily the fastest car, but the flywheel, once I get it spinning inside, it will provide the force to drive the car forward. And you'll see that the car, this car behaves very differently. So I'm gonna make one quick recap again. The battery car or the battery powered car, Tommy car, pullback, and lastly is the uh, flywheel car. So I'm gonna go back to the track here. And let me adjust the camera just a little bit so you can see more clearly. Remember, you're paying attention to how I make the measurements. You wanna be thinking about the quality of the measurements that we're going to end up with. And uh, you also wanna think about the vehicles. Maybe everything is not my fault. Maybe some of it is the vehicles are, are misbehaving or doing something that they shouldn't be doing. So essentially what I've measured out here is a three meter track. I have three meter sticks laid end to end. I put a piece of tape on either end. The distance is going to be the same for all of the vehicles. And I would like you to think about why did I do that? Why did I choose the same distance? Did I have to choose the same distance? Could I have chosen different distance? Would that be a better way of doing it? Um, but ultimately we have to think about how precisely we can measure it. Okay, so really important that you understand those meter sticks have a thousand markings on them. So in theory, I could read the distance here down to 3.000. Now, I don't know if I can measure quite that well uh, because again, I'm just pushing meter sticks against each other. So I don't know if how well I can really measure it. I might be off by a little bit, but I feel like it's safe to say that the precision of our measurement is 3.00, 3.00 meters. That's gonna be the distance for all the vehicles. You could go ahead and put that in right now. I'm going to bring up the timer on my phone and I'm going to bring it up here and show you. And once I can see that it's showing on the camera, I'm going to go ahead and take it away. I'm not going to read the timeout. You're just going to read it off the, the clock. It's going to be a pretty, pretty small time. Let's start with the battery powered car. I'm going to put the battery powered car right on the start line. I have the front of the car lined up with the edge of the tape. I'm going to get the Timer ready, and when the car takes off, I'm gonna follow it so that I can stand over there. Here we go.
Perfect. All right. The battery-powered car had a time right there. So make sure you record that in your time column, and let's get ready for the next car. The next car is called the Tommy car. I'm going to put it also at the stop line, start line. It's lined up with the front edge. Make sure I give him some room. Push the head down. Okay. Tommy car went a little bit quicker. So here is the time for the Tommy car. So I'm going to wind the car up first and then bring it to the start line. Uh, or I can put it forward to the start line and pull it back. And now I'm going to hold the wheels in place. I'm setting my timer. And here we go. That was quick. All right, that was the pullback car. And Pullback car had a time of 1.5. One last car. This is a tricky one. I have to get the flywheel spinning, and it's very difficult to let go of it at the finish line. So I have to wind it up by pushing it like that. So I'm going to let it go a little bit before the start line and try to get the timer as it goes past there, and I'll try and catch it at the other end too. Not bad. That was the flywheel, the flywheel car. And the flywheel car had a time of 